everyone. Um, the reason I'm making this film is um, there's a lot of people that are quite alarmed at me suddenly coming out as a psychic. And um, that works both ways because as a result it seems to be as though um, having spent um, most of my life misunderstood um, I don't want that to continue and having developed a psychic gift I find that it's just perpetuated that particular issue so um, something I learned after 18 months in therapy is something called personal responsibility um, such a thing called codependent relationships and it all goes back to childhood um, depending on your attachment with your parents, your caregivers. Um, now, when I first started therapy 18 months ago, not, no, it wasn't 18 months ago, I was in therapy for 18 months, and I chose to pay for it myself. I was offered free therapy um, when I went to the doctors and said I didn't feel like I was coping as a result of my mother um, becoming terminally ill and my marriage falling apart. Um, and having an inner circle friendship with people that didn't really have my best interests at heart. Now, at this stage in my life, I um, look back on that time and I do take personal responsibility because I didn't know any better. I didn't feel like I deserved love because I hadn't been shown it by properly 100%. You know, love should be unconditional, especially when. Um, you're a child you know we as adults um, are there to guide and shepherd our children um, and teach them the right way to behave but in society you know there's a lot of expectations on people that right from birth we are guided by the government from the moment we're born we're born into the NHS government owned organization they take all your details all your personal information your date of birth from the moment we're born, we become property of the government via a birth certificate. Then if we have health issues, we are all recorded. I mean, I had 12 years in social services and having worked in Birmingham, the failing local authority for eight years, I don't know how many of you know this, but um, Birmingham is the largest local authority in Europe. It, you know, um, Children's services do get um, offsteaded like schools, and for the last eight years they've been a failing local authority. Now I worked within that system for many years as a family support worker, um, agency work. I saw firsthand a lot of the cock-ups, basically, um, that damaged families. As Professor Sue White, who I've contacted, said, I'm quoted in some of my um, letters of complaint to social services, she said the medicine is killing the patient. Um, Birmingham Social Services is a very problem focused and not solution focused. Um, social workers are trained at, uni at universities with training that is developed by the government. So they're mind controlled. Mm. Addiction, nicotine, Sorry, you'll find that I do jump from subject to such subject. It's a dyslexic quality. I have dyslexia. My auntie Joan is very dyslexic. Uh, it runs in the family. It's genetic. Nicotine, one of the most highly addictive drugs there is. Now, um, when I was in a mental institution, I was offered a lorazepam before I was offered an extra cigarette break. Um, it's nuts. I came in without any underwear, without a phone, without money. Um... And there was no tobacco, no access to funds. It was a high security unit. Unit we weren't allowed the internet. The phone calls were controlled. Now I was wrongfully sectioned. My um, my diagnosis of post traumatic stress disorder from my mistreatment of the police, from my drink driving offence, which by the way, even though I take full responsibility for, was a two minute journey from the school to home. And I'd had my last drink at lunchtime, but because I exercised the right to remain silent, because I was actually terrified, and because of my psychic gift, the <clears throat> officer that dealt with me, as soon as he came near me, I felt the toxicity from him. So 
I chose not to speak and as a result I was dragged from the car and thrown into the road cuffed in front of three of my neighbours, my first offence age 39. It just went from bad to worse. Um, I was menstruating and I was refused the right to a toilet. Now the way I was treated was a disgrace and I've never actually acted like that. I think we behave as others expect us to behave to some extent and I was treated so badly by the police, denied information, rights to food, water, warmth, information, driven half an hour away from my home without my family told where I was going. They, they were left guessing and I was as to where I was being taken. I was talked about as though I wasn't there in the car treated me appallingly worse than dog I wouldn't treat my worst enemy as bad I was kept in custody locked up in a cell even though I'm claustrophobic it's on my GP records I'm anxious it's on my GP records I did come off the telegram for that I was only ever on a low dose for it but I am anxious and claustrophobic um and wow being locked up in a cell desperate no information being treated like a dog does something to your brain. I'm a highly sensitive person, always have been. There's a book written on it, it goes back to Carl Jung and Freud. Jung did the first amount of research on it. Um, he was a contemporary of Freud and he noticed that 20% of the population had 20% more nerve endings. It runs through a hundred species of animals in the earth. We are the canaries in the coal mine. Any of you that are interested could look up. Um, the coal miners uh, used to take canaries down to the coal mines because they sensed the gases um, and they served as a warning to the coal miners because if the canary stopped singing and they would still sing even though they were in a cage, even though they were in a coal mine, even though they were bright and beautiful in this darkness and this black, um, they could sense the toxicity in the room before um for anyone else and they warned them my brand granddad bred canaries that's quite significant my house next door number 74 Bolden road is 74 is also the year of my birth next door there's an aviary i have a strong sense that i should have that house one day i have a dream of taking cage birds and setting them free in australia which is their homeland i remember a story my granddad told me he was also a sexual abuser a paedophile by the way but he'd also um taught me how to give a baby canary the kiss of life because we were in his aviary one day and I noticed this tiny little bird scrap of a little thing it was about so big I nearly stepped on it and it was a such a beautiful moment I wasn't very old probably about six or seven and I noticed it on the floor wriggling away and he showed me how to put this canary in my hands and breathe in it give it the kiss of life and he told me a story about how the mother often rejects the canary and that we can you know um breathe breathe life into it so i did i did that i breathed life into that canary and my granddad taught me that even though he was an abuser so you know it's yin and yang isn't it it's <laughs> no one person it's all good or all bad it's a very confusing thing, you know, and I don't think anyone should judge anybody else. I've been judged such a lot in my life. Now, it's all on the internet. If you're a life path number seven, and combined with unblocking childhood trauma, and going through trauma, and being a potential mystic, it goes back to Pythagoras, then you'll find that you could develop a very strong psychic gift. This happened to me in October and it was very, very frightening for me. I was scared of my own shadow. Now many, many psychics end up in mental institution. My actual guide who runs a crystal shop and makes money living uh, a living off readings um, spent three years in psychosis and everyone that's a psychic has warned me not to be open about what I do. Well, I have a saying, never hide. You know, I've spent my whole life hiding who I am. So I fought the system, a lot of psychic um, symptoms mirror that of schizophrenia. I am every label, when I'm receiving a message, I um, go quite autistic. My body is used as a channel, see this here, there's certain someone who doesn't want to receive a message from me, his father sends me itches. 
carry on. Sorry, computer went down. Um, itches on my third eye, see? Now, I get really annoyed because I was told by my guide not to become an assistant secretary because it could just take over your life. You've got to live on the earth plane as well, so you have to have some control and boundaries with the messages. If you open up too fast, it's like being delivered a wand without an instruction manual. Um, it can take you over. So, you know, as there are bullies in life and strong characters in life that come forward, they're also in the other side and they desperately want to get messages to their loved ones. But people shoot the messenger and that's why I keep continuing to get myself into trouble. That's why I need a good lawyer because the truth hurts and the path to freedom is a lonely one. Now, one thing I have learned is not to give my gift away for free anymore. So um, people must come to me. They must want the guidance can't force it upon people even if their angels want it and I have been subjected to a great deal of pain as a result of delivering messages that people don't want to hear. It must be very frustrating for our loved ones on the other side seeing where we're going wrong and wanting to guide us. It's the same as in life like with parents and children but you know we have to make our own mistakes in life and people shoot the messenger don't they over and over. Well I'm not giving my gift away for free anymore. I had a real dilemma um, whether I should take money for it. It doesn't seem like, you know, if people can't afford it, I'll ask them to donate. A percentage will go to charity and all money earned will go to um, elevate other highly sensitive people. We all have the potential potential to be psychic. Though, like anything in life, there are going to be some leaders, but teachers, there is the potential. It's all in the Celestine prophecy. It's all online. You know, I can talk further about... Um, how it works for me at another time but um i've been quite drained now and it's really important to keep your energies balanced so as you see today i have been wake up i don't need very much sleep since the psychic gift started because i've got wind beneath my wings and this is time for contemplation i wake wake up wash shower think research learn i don't have a television anymore it's all about education education is power so nelson, nelson mandela anyway this is me without all the makeup the naked truth no jewelry no mysticism I just want people to understand it really and not be afraid of it and not be afraid of me because I'm a pussycat really. Well, as long as they cross me and then I'll become the Pink Panther. So anyway, um, thanks Facebook friends and don't be afraid of me. Don't shoot the messenger please. And if you want the gift, you come to me in future and I don't come to you and give it for free. Um, you can donate for whatever piece it has given you. Okay, signing out for today. Bye.